Hey, welcome to From the Ham Shack. My name's John NJ4Z, and I'm here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And today we're going to be talking about a build that I'm working on for the DX Commander himself, Callum McCormick, M0MCX. Hey, NJ4Z here. Welcome to my Ham Shack in Rock Hill, South Carolina. My name is John, and today on From the Ham Shack, we're talking about a project I'm building for Callum McCormick, the DX Commander himself, M0 MCX. So, uh, about a month ago, Callum was kind enough to, and generous enough to spend some time with our local amateur radio club, the York County Amateur Radio Society here in South Carolina, and uh, he did a live presentation for us. Uh, via Zoom, and uh, he live streamed it on his YouTube channel. We recorded it and put it on our YouTube channel. So if you'd like to check it out, you can go to DX Commander, or you can go to the York County Amateur Radio Society and check out the the uh, recording of the stream. Uh, during the stream, uh, Callum was talking about various antennas he had built and. Uh, different projects he had worked on and answering questions in general about his business, his ham career, where he sees the hobby going. And it was an, a lot of fun. Well, during this presentation, I brought up an antenna he presented about two and a half years ago uh, on his live stream on Friday nights he used to do. And it was a uh, old CB antenna design that um, was a three element triangular array, parasitic array. And Callum had presented it and did it in MMANA, the design, and we modeled it. And it looked like it performed pretty well. And I was excited about the antenna. Just, you know, with field day around the corner for 2019, I thought it might be an interesting antenna to build. So uh, I started construction on it, did a little research, went to Home Depot and uh, grabbed a bunch of uh, outlet cover plates, two gang outlet outlet cover plates and I use those as uh, radial plates. I got some 90 degree housings for SO239 connectors and I cut a bunch of radials out and I had three, actually I have four, but I used three of my spider beam 12 meter poles, uh, push up uh, fiberglass poles uh, that uh, I usually use to support die poles and things like that in the field. Uh, I decided to use them as vertical elements, uh, so we went ahead and attached the vertical wires uh, to those and used quick disconnect uh, from the back of the SO239s to the radiating elements, and so we made the antenna, and uh, we ran it parasitically, and interesting enough, it's uh, it worked quite well. Uh, let me show you my screen here. Okay, so this is the basic layout for the antenna. It's an equilateral triangle. Each of these angles is 60 degrees. You have a quarter wavelength on each side between the three elements. Now pay no attention to this relay network here. We're going to talk about it as parasitic element first. Underneath each of these, uh, ra uh, these uh, elements here, rating elements or radial fields, three of them, that are two wavelengths of the uh, operating bands. So if this were for 40 meters, this would be 80 meters of radials. What I did is I cut eight 10 meter radials uh, because I was using 40 meter elements. Uh, so uh, I had 80, 80, 240 uh, meters of radials underneath these three antennas. Now, if this was a permanent installation, I would have bonded these uh, radials where they crossed each other together. Okay, now the idea is you bring your line from your from your transmitter to a T piece. You feed two of the elements in phase, and a third element you make a little shorting element that goes on uh, the SO239 that shorts the shield and the center conductor, and basically makes the radiating element and the radial field uh, coupled <clears throat> as one unit and becomes a reflector. So you have two in phase, one reflector, and you basically, if this was the one that was shorted out, then these two are in phase, and the RF gets pushed this way, okay? Basically, plan south if you're looking at it, okay? So you feed these with equal lengths of 50-ohm coax from the T-piece. This is 50-ohm back to your transmitter, 
and that's how the antenna is constructed. Here's a quick picture of what we built for field day. Uh, these are 12 meter uh, spider beam poles and there's radio fields under each of these and a uh, wire going up each one that is cut, I believe, to 10.02 meters, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, you can see for scale, here's my friend Philip, KM4WLS, uh, there off to the side of one of the antennas so I can give you an idea how big this array is. And so let's take a look at performance. So parasitic array, these little red dots here, me, these two are in phase. And this one is shorted out so it becomes a reflector. It's pushing all the RF this way. From the uh, bird's eye view or the plan view, you get a uh, nice RF bubble looks like this. From the side, that's what it looks like if you would cut that RF bubble in half. And we were getting about 5.5 dBi gain um, over uh, what would be an omnidirectional version of this antenna. And it was in this direction, and it was at 23 degrees. So not too bad. It performed really well. For field day, 23 degrees is an awesome ang takeoff angle, so it worked fantastic. Well, on Callum's follow-up to the original presentation on the antenna, um, he was talking about rotating this thing. And, and it's you can rotate it. It's not a problem. Um, you take the T piece or one connection loose off that T piece and move it over here where you have the grounded one and move that grounding over here now. And now the RF goes this way, or, you know, you can go put these two in phase and short this one and the RF would go that way. So you can rotate it. It just takes a little time and a little bit of effort and you can go out and stop transmitting and go out and rotate it. And that's what we did for field day. Now, there's another way of doing this, and that's what Callum brought up in his um, follow-up. He brought up using a phased approach to this, okay? So let's go back to this slide. You see this relay network here, okay? Now, this is a box that's built specifically um, to switch the elements around, okay? So each of these elements are fed from this relay box with equal lengths of 50 ohm coax, okay? And you have a coax coming in from the uh, radio, okay? And you have a control line now uh, because you have to find a way to switch these relays. So you use 12 volt relays and you can switch to relays. So what happens is now you're gonna feed all three of these together okay from that relay box that's sitting out here in the center and you're going to engage one of those relays and it basically takes the signal and puts a delay in that signal so you use a piece of 75 ohm coax it's called a phasing line or a phasing cable it's cut for a specific frequency at a specific length uh, but again your 50 ohms to each of these, but you put in a loop of se of uh, 75 ohm coax. I used 71 degrees of uh, phasing angle, okay, and that would make this later in the f when you transmit. These two are in phase. Now this one's behind in phase by 71 degrees, and effectively it gives you a little better performance than a parasitic ray where this would be shorted. So what we're looking at is 5.92 dB again. And you say, John, um, that's only three d uh, tenths of a dB better. Why would you want to go through that extra effort? Well, instead of going out here and making the switch physically, all I do is turn a knob on the desk and that antenna rotates. Okay, so we get a pattern that kind of looks like this. Okay. When element one is engaged, if you have an element here, an element here, an element here, this is one, this is two, and this is three. If I delay one, put the phase line in the, into element one and that chain, it pushes it this way. Now, if I hit the button and go to element two, which is here, now this one's delayed, these two are in phase, one and three, uh, one and three, and then the pattern goes to the southeast and then again if I delay element three 
one and two are in phase and one and two are in phase and now it goes to the southwest okay the beauty of this is you get about 100 degrees of beam width and what i consider beam width which for me is the max gain point minus 3 db to either side okay so from this point here if this is zero uh, degrees okay maximum gain point I get 50 degrees this way before it drops to 3 dB below that maximum gain and 3 dB and 50 degrees 3 dB this way. So that gives me 100 degrees of beam width. Okay, We all know a circle is 360 degrees. So I have 100 here, 100 here, and 100 here. That leaves me 60 degrees that I'm not covering uh, at 3 dB or better, uh, dBi or better. Uh, but if you look at these lobes here, in reality, uh, the lowest point here is still 1 dB I of gain. So this antenna has a really good uh, performance, and it does cover 360 degrees. And you can decide which direction you want those elements to face so that you can uh, cover the part of the globes that you want to cover, the part of the country, whatever area you want to hit with uh, your radiating RF. Okay, so we have our uh, three lobes that we can operate off of. Okay, we've got element one, element two, element three. When they're all um, in phase, you get a nice bubble RF uh, omnidirectional pattern, a big, big old donut RF. When you energize element one, so now we're energizing this, uh, this becomes delayed, these two are in phase, we push all the RF up like here, okay? And this is a 3D representation. Same thing with two, you get the same pattern, just in a different direction, in element three, you get the same pattern in a different direction. But these are very nice bubbles of RF, okay? So, while we were talking about the antenna with Callum, he said, oh, yeah, I remember you sent me an email and you built that thing. And, and we were talking about phasing it and how to do it. And he said, you know, I just haven't had time to mess around with that. I'd really like to do that. And I said, Callum, you know what? If you provide the phasing cables and the antenna, I'll build you a relay box. <laughs> and I don't think he took me seriously until I sent him an email the next day and said, hey, uh, I have some of the parts here. Here's what I'm looking at doing. Would you like to see anything different than what I'm proposing? Because I'm going to build this thing for you. And he became very excited. So, uh, true to my word, uh, here are the photographs of the constructed uh, pieces. As you can see, uh, you remember the diagram I showed you, which was my build diagram. Uh, very much that's how I do everything. I pattern it out. I want to see exactly what it's going to look like before I build it. And hence, I have a built box and then here is the controller so come back to me here and uh here is the box so here's the transmitter and ground side here are the element outputs and here is the delay lines out connections okay the beauty of this box is and that's why i built them this way is that it allows you to decide which band you want to operate it's not built for a specific band so if you want a 40 meter um, antenna array, you build a 40 meter three element triangular array and you cut your phasing line for 40 meters and you have a 40 meter. You want to build a 20? Okay, great. This way you can build all the antennas and you can have one box that can switch between them or if you really want to build a box with the delay line built into it, you can do it and have a, a, a single box. But um, I thought it was nice to have an agnostic box that I could put whatever delay line I wanted on a thing and make it work. So I also built the controller for the box. Okay. So as you can see, it's got the on off switch. It's got the power LED, the four LEDs for the directions, whether it's Omni or element one, element two, element three. And I purposely left space on this side of the box here so that if you would desire to put a label um, for what direction you have the antenna facing when you have each of those um, relays energized, you could say, okay, this one's pushing north, this one's pushing southeast, this one's pushing southwest, 
and you have how your box is connected. And on the back of the box, we have your power connections and um, a uh, connection for a uh, terminal strip for a connection for your uh, uh, control cable, which is a four conductor, 18 gauge, 22 gauge uh, conductor that you can run out to the control box. Now, Callum did ask me, I, I would normally put aircraft connectors on your four pin aircraft connectors. He has some cables run out to his field where he does all of the experiments and his testing. He's got some four conductor out there. I don't think he wants to put a specific connector on it. So he asked me to put a cable gland on the relay box, which I did, and a terminal strip inside so he can make easy connections. And I put a terminal strip on the control box so that it would be easy for him to make the connection. Since this is something that's gonna sit inside or be undercover next to the operator, I didn't think about putting cable glands on here for that, it just didn't make sense. And I typically would have put power poles on here, but he doesn't like power poles, so uh, no power poles for Callum. But, so again, I'm excited about sending this over to him. It'll probably go out next week. It's uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving 2021 today. Um, I want to take some pictures, and I'm also going to do a couple experiments. I have two of these boxes and controllers already built. This is a more refined version of the original prototypes that I built for field day. But we're going to take those, and we're going to mess around with some other antenna designs, and we'll come back and discuss those. So uh, without any further ado, I wish you all to stay healthy, stay safe, and of course, stay passionate about amateur radio because you know I am. And this is NJ4Z from Rock Hill, South Carolina, from the Ham Shack, wishing everybody a fun 73, and I'm out.